I want to sh show you how to calculate inflation adjusted dollars. A lot of times we're going to be using financial information over many years and so financial information changes uh, based on a lot of different uh, factors but a, a key uh, a driver of financial values over time is the effect of inflation and so what you have here is per capita income in the state of New York and I've got it from 1990 all the way through 2012 and there's been quite quite a lot of growth in the per capita income for in New York and you can see that it's more than doubled since 1990 but we don't know if New Yorkers can actually buy more in 19, in 2012 than they could in 1990 or if this income has just grown in step with inflation and so in order to do this we need to calculate the inflation adjusted dollars so let's do this by uh, going to the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics and I think it's usually easiest just to search consumer price index and you get this link to the Bureau of Labor Statistics and we're going to go down here to databases. We'll take this uh, urban consumer. And uh, it allows us to select a geographic area. We could just do uh, the US average, but since we're in New York, we'll, we'll take this New York, New Jersey, Long Island uh, data. And we'll do it on, and we'll select all items. And I'll just show you kind of basically the information we're giving. This is per month in each year, and they, the default is set to just the, the previous 10 years. Let's think about what this is. This is the annual number, which is what we want to use. Uh, let, me, let me do some formatting so that it's the, the values that we actually want to use. So we want from 1990 through 2012 and we just want the annual data let's retrieve that so what is this data think about it for a second and see if you can see if you can uh, figure out what you think it is I'm going to just clean this up I made sure that all that matched I'm going to delete that one way to think of this data is if on a certain basket of goods that the Bureau of Labor Statistics identified and they went out and purchased that basket of goods in 1990, they had to pay $138.50 for that basket of goods. Or, you know, that's the average price of the basket of goods per item. Uh, that's just that's an oversimplification, but it's but it's uh, but it's not too far off. Then that same basket of goods would cost you one hundred and forty-four dollars and eighty cents in nineteen ninety-one, cost one hundred and fifty dollars in nineteen ninety-two. Blah blah blah. You can see here's the effect of inflation. So this is the CPI. It's the Consumer Price Index. All right, and we want to be able to develop a, let's calculate a 1990, what's referred to as a deflator. So we want to put all the future cash flow or all these future uh, per, per capita incomes as though they would have occurred if there had been no inflation in, on goods purchased. So in order to calculate a deflator, we always take the 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 base of what we're the base year of the index and divide it by each each year. So this is the base year in 1990, and I'm going to lock that in because we're going to do the same base year each time, and we'll divide the base by each year. So in this first year, the base is going to be equal to 1 because the relationship between 
the amount of money that uh, we see here as a per capita income in 1990 is exactly the same with if we ignore inflation because it's the same number but this calculator calculation that we've got set up here it locks in the base year and then just allows us to to calculate the ratio of the base year to future years and we're going to see the that information drop what what we're I'm just changing the standardizing the or making a uniform decimal place so if we ignore inflation or if we remove inflation the effect of future dollars is that uh, we uh, 1991 has 95 percent of the purchasing power um, then it that it the, each dollar has 95% of the purchasing power that it would have had in 1990 and then 1992 has 92% of the purchasing power that it had in 1990 all the way down to 2012 every single dollar has about 54 uh, 55% of the purchasing power so if we want to calculate 1990 dollars we can multiply this percent by the each year okay. okay excel's gonna freak out on me here for a second so yeah I'll take out the so let's calculate this will multiply the deflator by each year's real per capita income and this is basically taking this percentage effect multiplied against the real income and we can see that the actual growth if there had been no inflation is much it's it's much more modest so let me add in that data to our time series here. And so you can see here this actual fairly modest uh, growth in purchasing power of the dollar over time. Well, this is helpful in seeing that the that personal incomes have grown, but um, not significantly. But it's a little bit hard to deal with if we're in 2013 to deal with uh, forecasting or or making decisions moving forward. If we're sitting here looking at 2000 at 1990 dollars, so we can calculate here a 2012 deflator by just taking the base year now to be the 2012 value of the index and dividing it by each observation this has a okay so how do we deal with this deflator let me just put up again in the uniform decimal places back here when we did the 1990 deflator what this meant was that each dollar in sub subsequent years from 1990 could purchase less um, and in in 2000 with our 2012 dollar we're saying each dollar prior to 2012 could purchase more so a single dollar back in 1990 could purchase a dollar and 82 cent what would what it would take a dollar and 82 cents to purchase in 2012 
So since we have that reference, we can do $2,012, and we'll just multiply these values and see that the growth has been modest, but now it gets us so that our our uh, we can see how it ends with 2012. So let me add that into our time series here. Okay. So this is functionally the same as this line here, which is in $1990. This one is in $2,012, and we can see this modest growth in incomes, in, in the purchasing value of incomes over time. So if we wanted to take this data and make some decisions with it, we could think about this, this, we could think about it like, with, if incomes are going up, non, donors might not give more money to nonprofits unless actually the purchasing value of their dollar is increasing. We could also think that if income is going up, uh, but uh, but the co but it's not going up fast enough to keep up with inflation, then there might be increased demand for public services. There, so it, this is important to be able to separate the effect of t of inflation on the value of the dollar over time from the effect of real growth in the underlying phenomenon that you're interested in, in analyzing. So I hope that's helpful.